Hello everybody, Wyatt Andrews Workshop here, and welcome to the Africa Pack. Um, so for this episode of Orwell Zoo, first thing we're going to do is check out all of the different scenery objects in this pack, and then we're going to check out two new exhibits, or one of them is new, the other one we just kind of updated. But we're going to check out two exhibits as well. But yeah, first we're going to check out all of the new pieces, and there are so, there's so many new pieces, I'm, I can't wait to show you guys all of them. So first thing we have is the emissive window panel. So I figure um, later on we have a couple North African themed window panels, and I figure what you use these for is um, as a kind of light. So when you turn on nighttime, yeah, you can um, you can adjust the light color you put under any of like your custom window panels or the ones we've got in the Africa pack itself. So I wasn't sure. I wasn't really sure um, exactly what you would use these for at first, but um, they're actually quite cool. And then we have um, these North Africa themed signs, which is weird because several of these animals are only native to South Africa, but um, they still look really cool and have a lot of utility. So we have the African penguin, fennec fox, I mean all of these meerkats. Um, and then you'll notice the um, a lot of these come in both brass and plaster. The plaster is flexicolor, which is very useful. And then, yeah, we have these little tiled rhino signs, and then um, another North African themed sign for the scarab beetle. And then we get into the good stuff. Um, we have all of these different um, tile pieces. Um, let's see what exactly they're called. The ceramic tile strips. So yeah, these are all flexi color, um, plaster, amazing texture too. Um, you'll notice how like well textured all of these items are, but the um, plaster especially. These are going to be another piece where um, these are just like a utility. You have to have these um, if you want your builds to look like sort of good in terms of like texture and just sort of piece usage. Um, I'm not so sure about these in terms of like broader application, but they still look really good. Um, what I'm mostly like over, over the moon about is all of these different little um, tile strips that you can um, that are flexi colors. So yeah. Right. And then um, I wanted to mention like a lot of us use um, sort of custom tiles that we make out of like brace plates or plaster switches or any of that kind of stuff. And I think those will still have a use, but um, I feel like a lot of us will retire to the official um, tile pieces. So that is very cool of Frontier to give us something like that. And then we get into more of the sort of much more heavily themed objects. So we have all of these archways, um, and then these little plates, which I think I'm not sure what I'm going to use these for yet. It's going to be unexpected. But I feel like when I need something like this, this will come in handy. Um, just because it's very small. I believe it's flexicolor, yeah. The brass ones aren't, but they still look cool. But um, yeah, you really never know with this game what kind of pieces you're going to need. So definitely don't sleep on a lot of these smaller ones. And then we have this door. Um, this door, I think, will actually be really useful for like um, chests and like boxes for backstage stuff. So yeah, it's really cool. And then we have... Um, these dromedary signs, similar to the meerkat ones from a while back, um, they both come in um, brass and um, flexicolor plaster. I think it's plaster. Yeah, plaster. And then we have these fences. Um, I don't think I'm going to get much use out of these. Um, maybe just sort of when I'm doing kind of either an Indian or Moroccan themed section and I need sort of extra texture on like a flat surface maybe. But these curved ones, I'm um, probably not going to end up using anytime soon. And then we have a pillar, and then these things are freaking gorgeous. They nailed the um, tile texture, like I mentioned a bit ago. Um, this fountain especially is so <laughs> freaking gorgeous. The whole time I was placing these down, I was thinking Remnant's going to love this, <laughs> because his um, Project Balboa Zoo uses a ton of these um, tiles, but he makes them out of gutter pipes, I believe, so... It'll be a um, really refreshing change of pace to not have to do that anymore. And then we have another smaller one, very cool. But this is this is definitely one of my favorite objects in the pack. And then we have this neat little lamp post, um, and then we have planters. Like these will be very useful, I think, because um, they're flexi color. And I feel like you could just get rid of all of the color on this, and um, it would be a very useful um, just sort of tiled planter um, if you make the colors uniform, 
whichever color you want, of course. And then we have um, North African lattice panel. Um, I'm not going to get too much use out of that, but there are some lattice panels coming up that will be extremely useful. So, you know, stay tuned. And then we have these logs. Um, I think they're just meant to be, yeah, just wooden beams, but um, they are flexi color. And um, I'm thinking these will be sort of similar to the Australia Australia logs where um, these will be very, very useful for um, custom like dead trees and that kind of stuff. And they, and they also just look great on their own without any additional coloring, but um, I'll probably be making them a more uniform tan for all of my sort of custom logs and climbing structures and stuff like that. Climbing structures especially will benefit from these. And then we have these um, shade umbrellas. Um, each pack sort of releases their own version, and I feel like I have absolutely zero use for it. But, um, you know, it, it looks neat. Um, you know, well textured and all of that. But um, I'm probably not going to get much use out of it. Um, just for the sort of style I'm usually going for. And then these the, um, plaster pieces. These are non-grid, flexi-color, and they're just gonna be so freaking useful. You have all of these different, um, what are these called? Vents, yeah, plaster wall vents. And windows, and then all of these non-gridded blocks and cylinders and stuff like that. These will be freaking incredible. And then we got um, pillars. These also have a really nice texture and are flexi color as usual. I'm thinking this one can make like a really nice tabletop. Um, not so much this little guy, but definitely this one. And then these ropes. I am gonna use the shit out of these ropes because they're flexi color, so you can make it a uniform um, color. Let me just demonstrate that real quick. And they also have um, they also have knots. That you can use in tassels. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use the tassels, but the ropes and the knots are going to be freaking incredible for climbing structures, especially. And also, like enrichment, because you'll notice, um, like, dog toys and other enrichment items have these sort of brightly colored ropes that the animals get to gnaw on. So, those will have a really nice, um, broad application. And then we have these um, sort of shop fascia items. So, we have like the um, window fascia, and then the canopy, and then these other glass canopies. Um, sort of similar to the other much more heavily themed objects in this pack. Um, I won't really have an extremely broad application for them, but you never know. Don't sleep on them because like if you're making this like a sort of modern, more heavily themed area for a specific animal, these can come in handy. And then we have these African penguin statues. I really, really love these, the texture on them. Like this one looks like it was sculpted like out of like clay. It's really, really nice and flexi color, of course. And then these rocks, I saw Eben using these um, when the embargo lifted, he posted pictures on Pronation, and I was thoroughly inspired, because I wasn't really sure how well these would work at first, but he um, demonstrated their application really, really well. As a kind of much more like fake looking artificial rock, um, but yeah, it looks fantastic. And then these, um, they're gonna be useful. <laughs> I have no idea how, but um, they're really tiny, like sort of general texture flexi color piece and I just think they're gonna be super useful for like signs and like little bits and bobs of custom scenery that we're gonna be making um, definitely other people who are much more creative than me are gonna like gonna be using these a ton so you know and then this statue um, I don't know <laughs> it looks it looks neat it's well made but um, you know I'm not really sure how I can apply this and then let's make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, these um, massive uh, North African themed statues with the fennec fox and the meerkat. Um, you know, they look cool. Um, but this rhino statue I think is gonna be very useful for like safari themed areas. It reminds me of something you'd see at the um, San Diego Wildlife Park. Um, I think it'll it'll be very cool for like entrance plazas and stuff like that. And then these, <laughs> these, these kind of jawbreaker looking things are um, part of the plaster set, just sort of, I think they're, yeah, wall tops, so you can use these to get a nice rounded texture. And then we have wall lamps, looking pretty cool. And then we have um, reward statues, so we have the fennec fox and the chimpanzee. These aren't really part of any specific scenery theme, you can just sort of use these anywhere. They look very cool. I'll definitely be using the um, fennec fox one around the desert dome. And then we get to even more fantastic stuff. This is the um, North Africa Arbor um, set. 
and it's very similar to the lattice we have in the new world set but it's flexi color so you could probably use these for like aviaries and stuff however you might not need to given what we're about to see but i still think these will have a really really nice broad application and then these beams as well they remind me a lot of the ones in the east asia set um we even have like um crossbars so like each like these like have like specific utility specific utility unlike the ones in the base game in the south america pack which were just sort of beams use them for whatever you want these are actual like crossbars so these will be great for like canopies and stuff <clears throat> excuse me and then we have these um part of the arbor set we just have wooden panels so these will be fantastic we've never had like a um flexi color set of these before so you know really nice simple object with a really great broad application and then we have um i mentioned these before the window frames so you would put like the light thing panel behind the window frame and you could get sort of any um different light color you wanted all right and then moving through we get to the plants so we have the oil palm um it looks pretty cool i definitely prefer the um foxtail and date and the other one that I'm forgetting, whose name escapes me, the acai palm, but um, these still look quite nice, and you'll definitely be able to get a lot of mileage out of these in your tropical sections. And then this is what everyone was freaking out about. Um, the Dren grass, it's, it's what we've always wanted, just like a placeable, sort of neutral color grass item, because the eel grass, let me pull that up, was a little too, it was a little too green, a little too like, wispy like like it looked aquatic you know but this this is going to be so good for um all of our land exhibits it's something we've always been asking for and then this the nitraria retusa bush um it's kind of a desert bush but um i feel like i'm gonna have a lot more mileage from the creosote bush and the blackthorn bush but this still looks really good like whenever you're doing like a sort of gnarly undergrowth this will definitely come in handy and then we have the Doom Palm. These look so pretty. This is definitely a tree I'm gonna be um, sinking down a lot as opposed to just using the actual trunk. And you can get like all sorts of really nice ground cover with these. They remind me of palmettos a lot. So if you're doing like a zoo based in Florida, these are definitely um, the tree for you. And then we have the Quiver Tree. This is a classic tree from like the wildlife park games, but um, now it's in Planet Zoo. And it looks good, but I personally prefer the dragon blood tree, um, just because it's a nice, much more neutral green. These are like sort of a kind of gross mustard color, but these are going to be great. Um, this is definitely another sink down tree that you can use for like desert and sort of tropical scenery or tropical areas specifically. Um, yeah, these are going to be great. This is definitely like a AS tier tree. And then these are so freaking gorgeous, the fever trees. I feel like the texture is a little, it's a little like, like sort of less, it's a little, it's a bit less textured than the other trees, but it makes up for it in the canopy. Like, look at that. That is so gorgeous. Um, I feel like you'll be able to use these anywhere, despite the yellow color. This is probably the only yellow-orange tree I'll be able to use. And, like, the orange isn't even that strong. Like, when you look from above, it's definitely a much like, greener color. Shut up, plane. I'm doing a video. <laughs> you might not even be able to hear if there's a plane going overhead. And then these, I'm not a huge fan of these, the sausage trees. Um, mostly just because of these things hanging down. Like, it definitely looks like this in real life, but, um, I don't know. They, the application is kind of lessened when these things appear, just because it looks... It kind of reminds me of, like, that fantasy tree in Planet Coaster, with all of, like, the different sort of lights hanging down. Um, but it still looks pretty cool. And then... Oh yeah, baby. Um, this is not part of the Africa Pack proper, it's part of the, um, update, the 1.6. But these are the mesh pieces. Jesus God in heaven, we've been asking for these since the very beginning, and they look fantastic. These ones especially, like the um, really small chain link pieces, which are flexicolor, as I've shown here. You can um, color them any way you want, and they look so good. Um, the mod people um, put out a flexicolor um, mesh set, but the hitbox was really difficult to get a hold of, but now that we have an official... Um, we have an official mesh piece, like, what more could you want? Like, 
<laughs> I feel like they don't even have to um, make updates anymore because um, we've gotten everything we've asked for, more or less. Like, we always wanted meerkats, we wanted abandoned penguin species, we wanted um, mesh pieces, and then I guess we wanted more plaster. I'm trying to think, like, I mentioned something else that was going to be extremely useful. Oh, the tiles, that's right, the tiles. And yeah, I can't really think of anything else we need, besides, like, more species, which the modders can handle. So, yeah, you know, Frontier, you know, meet up next week, you did good, you know, <laughs> you're, all, you're all set, we can take it from here. I'm just kidding, please keep making more DLCs, because you're just, you're just spoiling us rotten at this point. This is, has been fantastic. Um, I'm not sure if this is better than the aquatic pack, because those flexi-colored rocks are probably like the ultimate edition, but I feel like, um, you know, this is definitely something we've always wanted, and I couldn't be more thankful. But it's not over yet, we have one-way glass panels. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get out of these, just because, like, um, you know, I don't really use the one-way glass fence in sandbox mode, at least, so, you know. It's, it's cool though, and they're, and they're flexi colors, so you could get like different um, glass colors. Even though it doesn't show up on the other side, um, it's still neat. And then finally, we have the tire. This was part of, I think this is part of the Africa like theme set that we got in the base game, but they added an off-road vehicle wheel. I was just kind of looking through the base game items to see if there's anything I missed, and this showed up. This might have been in the, this might have been in the game from the start, but I hadn't noticed it, so. You know, now you do too. However, we're not completely done with scenery items because we have um, enrichment. And then there was a bubble machine, but I couldn't place that down for some reason, so whatever. But then we have these logs for the meerkats that look fantastic. I'll definitely be using these for like all kinds of stuff, not just enrichment. Then we have a little tennis ball. Then we have a disco ball, which actually lights up at night. I'm not sure how much, well, I know I'm not gonna get any mileage out of this, but like, you know, it looks it looks cool, I guess. I'm not really sure, like, um, I'm not really sure, like, what I would ever use this for, but, um, you know, it's there if you want it. And then, we are going to go check out, um, some of the other, or some of the exhibits we've made, um, for the pack. Because I didn't get a key, but, um, I made them in preparation for this, so I will see you there. Okay, so here we are at the Feral Family Penguin Cove. Um, this is adjacent to the Desert Dome. I figured I would just start like um, sort of adding exhibits to this sort of radial um, point we have in the zoo where the Desert Dome is kind of the center of it and we just have exhibits fanned out around it. <laughs> we have, that's where I put all the scenery. But we're gonna check out our first exhibit in this area, the Penguin Cove. So, um, shout out to Toves for this gate. He has an entire, like, pack of backstage items that are gorgeous and use all of the new pieces, which is very refreshing because all of the backstage stuff we've had before was from, like, the beginning of the game. So, you know, it's nice to have some new stuff. And then, yeah, this is the Penguin Cove. I think I based this sign off the one at the London Zoo. Yeah. Um, and then I added, um... I added a bunch of these little leaves, which are just the flowers, colored a uniform orange. And then I brought these little lampposts over from the Gorilla Canyon section, just because they have a really nice, um, sort of broad application when you're trying to do something sort of a little more rustic and adventurous. And then we'll go through, and we have a little donor plaque. And then I snuck in this little, um, African penguin sign because, um, I, I just, like, opened the, I'd opened the file and sort of flipped through the, um, scenery items we had, and this was one of them, I just sort of... I plunked it down. Looks pretty cool. Let me press play because these guys like to hang around. And yeah, this um, exhibit layout was directly based on the one at the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. Um, I'll zoom out kind of just to sort of show you. And then um, over here, I'm planning on doing like a whole um, penguin complex. There's going to be like a dome um, where guests can walk through and check out some of the cold weather species that's going to be based off the one at the, I think, St. Louis Zoo. They have like a sky dome thing where it's like um, colored till it be like a more sort of cloudy dark sky. It's really cool. Um, I'm really excited to get to work on that, but um, I just wanted to get an episode out for launch day. And then, so this is their shallow water pool. They have a deeper one coming up. 
And then you'll notice the um, walls are like flecked with um, penguin feces. I don't know if it's actual penguin feces or they just painted it. Um, that's how it is at the Woodland Park Zoo in real life. And then yeah, it's their shallow water pool. I um, guess you can come check that out. Um, I have yet to do any signage, but um, again, I wanted to get this out as quickly as possible. And then up here, um, this is a sort of quick little land viewing area. Um, I wanted to, I put this up here, like I'd done all the terrain, but then I was like, how are guests gonna get up here? So I just put in this sort of like stone amphitheater thing that kind of blends in with the surrounding rock. It looks really cool and like little kids could come climb up here and get a face-to-face -face look with the penguins. And I love how you can see the desert dome in the background. It looks really neat. And then over here, we have our first um, view of the deep water pool. I had just put glass up, but then I remember we had these glass bubble pieces. So I just kind of, I threw that up in front and it looks really cool, kind of like um, melts into the rock a little. And you can see the penguins just chilling out in the water. And then um, I continued the sort of mud wall technique um, where you just use the uh, aquatic pack trunks and you just blend the rocks in with them to disrupt the texture a little. And then I threw the um, crowberry bush up top just to get that kind of nice mossy look. And then coming around here, we have, oops, shut up, phone. Coming around here, we have the um, final deep water viewing for the penguins. Let me adjust the light a little bit there. And yeah, it looks, it looks so pretty. I really love how this came out. Um, and for some reason they aren't swimming underwater, even though it's four meters, but whatever. It still looks really cool. And then, yeah, you can come around here. That'll be the exit area. Haven't really done much of that yet. And then um, we'll check these guys out up close because the model looks freaking gorgeous. We had a um, modded African penguin before, but it was based on the king penguin, so the walking animation was a little funky. But now we have the official guys in person, and they look so good. I love them. I love the um, texture on the underside of the wing and the feet especially. They really nailed like the sort of um, freckled pattern these guys have. And then we'll look at more detail in the exhibit itself. Um, I managed to spread the gravel path all the way around just using the um, two meter technique. Um, it looks a lot better than if I would have just used the sand. Um, it definitely has like a much sort of varied texture and then I mixed in all of the different um, aquatic rocks and then some of the temple pieces just to break it up a little. And then I have these rows of nest boxes. I just used the um, in-game door, like the single door. Let me bring this out just to show you what I did. Um, I use these whenever I need like a um, little gateway for the smaller animals, um, just because like it has like a really nice metal texture and um, the, the front part is flexi color so you can adapt it to any sort of rock work you need. So yeah, um, we'll actually head into the backstage because I did sort of a full backstage for these guys. Um, I added like plaster behind the rock work um, just so guests, um, or just so like people wouldn't, the people wouldn't have to like sculpt this entire backside because like there's no reason they would do that in real life. So, um, but I made sure like when I was um, adding the plaster behind it, not to do it in this part, just so like guests could like, Guests can still see this part, so um, it would kind of break the immersion a little. And then, yeah, coming through here, I <laughs> meant to add a planter for that tree, oh well. Um, then I added a little water towel, towel tower, and then a whole filtration system. Um, this sort of layout is still directly based on the um, Woodland Park Zoo. And then this was something um, I forgot to mention in the Desert Dome episode, was that Juno, on the roof of the Desert Dome, had like leaves and then he put out and then he put like garbage bags and then he put like a rake i don't know it was a fantastic detail that i wanted to sort of spread throughout the zoo so you know here we are and then i put it up next to the trash cans and then continuing here we have some hvac and we've got gutters and then we have the garage door and the regular door for staff to come in i um didn't do an interior but i'm gonna i'm gonna rescue this guy there you go and yeah, that is the Penguin Cove, but we still have one more habitat to check out, so I will see you over there. Okay, so the final part of this episode is the beginnings of the U.S. Bank Africa Pavilion. 
Um, I had used US Bank to sponsor the Gorilla Canyon section, so we're just kind of continuing that. I figured they would sort of sponsor this whole section for the master plan. Um, and like the Africa, or starting the Africa section episode, we still have this giraffe exhibit. This would kind of be the entrance portion that leads guests in. Ooh, excuse me. And then we have some sort of desert garden up front. And then coming through here, we have um, sort of entrance pathway into it. Um, just sort of winding through. We have these cool lion statues. This one is actually the um, Siberian tiger, but um, it works just fine as a lioness because there's no stripes. So um, I just thought I'd put that next to the male lion statue we got. And then if I could just turn my mouse over, that would be great. No? Okay. What's going on? There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. All right, and then moving through this winding pathway, I have yet to really do much development over here. Like this whole area is gonna be fenced off, but um, you know, I just wanted to show you guys what I've got so far. And what I've got so far is the meerkat exhibit, finally. Um, I had completely redone this because um, before it was just sort of generally unsuitable for the animals, so I just wanted to, them to be able to actually like, move around in it. So yeah, they look they look so good. They look fantastic. Um, I love their texture. They are real nice and slender. Hello, and they dig. I wasn't. I didn't think they would actually be able to pull it off, but um, they do actually have like a full digging like animation thing, and um, they actually like leave little holes behind, which is super cool. Um, but it looks a little wonky just because I have like the um, the, um, the upside down like flower bed texture. So um, well, let me see if I can pull it up here. So yeah, like this is the underside of the flower bed, but it does have a really nice like dirt texture. So um, like an alternate dirt texture to the one we have. So I just thought I would use that, sort of continue it around the exhibit. And then they have this little door here and I figure staff would come in through here just to do any maintenance in the holding area. I don't wanna, I wanna make sure um, one of them like doesn't, um, oh yeah, there are several of them are in here. Let's move out, guys. Come on, you have a whole yard to hang out in. These guys are probably like miserable. Come here. There you go. So yeah, this is the meerkat exhibit. It um, it sort of has a little sneak peek into the giraffe exhibit. Um, not as much as before, just because I wanted to make the walls higher, but um, it still has a really cool like view. So you know, they're hanging out. <laughs> they're very cute. Um, and yeah, I'll put up a picture of how it used to look, but, um, it was definitely, I definitely prefer this, um, it's definitely much better designed with the, the mud walls and the fences, um, before it was like an electric fence, which didn't seem safe at all, so this is definitely an improvement. So yeah, this is the beginnings of the Africa Pavilion, this is gonna be the pavilion, it's just a picnic pavilion, it'll be the sort of center point of the area, and we'll have a huge savanna yard going out here with like all, all the rhinos and stuff and yeah we will continue the africa section we have, we still have the indo malaya building to finish and yeah i'll see you in whatever comes first and have a good one